Hello guys, it's Monkey, and today um, I'm starting my what's going to be a, maybe a series, depending on how well received it is, um, called In Depth, where I go really into depth on creating different things. Today we're going to be uh, creating YouTube backgrounds, um, but you know, other episodes will be creating other things um, from backgrounds to intros to modeling whatever you know um so if you want to request something then just comment below and yeah right so we're going to get started um this is just a normal template if you haven't got one of these by now then you sh well you will have got one by now but they're really easy to find so just create a new layer and this is going to be like the back the background so usually i i I either fill the background black like that, or I do this, where if you go on here and go to gradient, and go here and pick something like this, and we're going to make this background green, just because I feel like it, I don't know why, and that looks crap, so what you've got to do now is change the style to radial and reverse it and as you can see that's the sort of effect what you get and if you just hold shift and drag it up like this then you'll get that and just click OK so now if you zoom out you can see you've got a really nice smooth gradient and it's really nice. It's just really smooth, and it's it's better than creating it yourself and getting it a bit uneven. You know, you've got the software doing it for you. So the next thing what we're going to do is we're going to well, we'll add a few effects to the to the modules. So we're going to add a drop shadow, put the opacity all the way up distance all the way down, the spread to around maybe 16 and the size to about 13. Maybe want to maybe drop down the spread a bit. Yep, 8. That looks pretty good. Then you want to add a stroke and put it at 1 and sometimes I like to do this. We'll see what it looks like with this but if you put the stroke at white and the blending mode, the blend mode even, to um, soft light. And then if we just zoom in a little bit, you see what you get. You get like a. Well, it just looks pretty cool, so. And it suits this background, so I'm going to keep it. The next thing, what we're going to do is. Well, I don't know why I close that out. The next thing, what we're going to do is maybe add. Um, oh, one minute actually we're going to change the color of the modules so if you press control shift n to create a new layer and go on your color picker and i'm going to have a really dark gray like that now what you want to do is just fill it in like that and press alt and click in between the two layers and it'll create a clipping mask now that's maybe a bit too big uh, a bit too big what am i talking about um, a bit too light, so I'm just gonna do that and turn the opacity down a bit just to get it a bit darker. Like that. Now, if we go back onto the modules, we can add things like inner shadow and you'll be able to see it. So if you put the opacity to 100, the distance to 0, the choke to maybe 13, you just sort of experiment with it. Turn that down a bit to 9 and then the size to about around 16. I think that looks pretty cool, so we'll keep it with that. And that's your sort of your basic background at the moment. We've, uh, you know, we've met, done the foundations, uh, if you like. And then you've still got to go on to get onto the advanced stuff. Well, not the advanced stuff, but, you know, something a little bit more advanced. So we want to create a new document and make it 20 
by 20. Now you'll notice it's really small, so just zoom in. And what you want to do is you want to select the whole thing, like that. Then on your... You, what you want to do is you want to move it with your arrow keys, move the selection up and to the left. And fill that in black. And press Ctrl D to deselect. And then, one second. Before you move it, actually, um, you want to get it to black and white. And you want to fill it in white. And then, Ctrl D. No, 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 no. Oh, wow. Select, reselect. Right, and then move it up and left. And fill it in black. You can do it the other way around if you like, but I'm just going to try it this way. Uh, then go to Edit and Define Pattern and call it Grid. Go on to here, and what you want to do is go on. You can go on to here and go Pattern Overlay and go on the grid bit and put the blend mode to overlay or soft light and that looks like really overwhelming so also you want to maybe put the scale down like that and the opacity like down because you don't want it too overwhelming like I've got mine at around I've got it at 36 so. so there you go there's the backdrop type thing now we're going to create some text. Uh, let's just check how far we're in. Seven minutes. There. That's pretty cool. And uh, just pick a nice font. Uh, I'm not really that good at picking fonts, but you know, I I like uh, Typograph and Typograph Pro, whatever. Um, but it's not really a good font for what we're about to do now. So I want just a nice bold font. So I'll go for if I can get it. We'll go yep. Yeah. Bebas new. Even though it's really overused, but this is just for tutorial purposes. And you want to write your name. Increase the size a little bit. Maybe like that. And control and Oops. If you just control T it, hold shift and go like that, then you keep it nice and straight. And you can place it how you like. And now we're just gonna add effects to the text. So first of all, if you want the text to be like that colour then keep it like that, but we're gonna we can change it in here anyway. So Add a drop shadow, passy 100%, distance all the way down, spread to about maybe 9, and size to around 9, maybe turn the spread down a little bit more, to 5. Add a stroke, which wants to be size 1. Then what you can do is you can add a gradient overlay, and we're on green, so what we could do is we could have a dark green like that going on to a lighter green and then what you'd want to do is change the style to radial mess around with the scale a little bit reverse it as well like that just like mess around again with the scale see what you like and then what you want to do is add an inner shadow opacity all the way up, distance down choke to around 6 maybe and size to maybe 10 I'm going to maybe darken this gradient a little bit by turning the opacity down 
and that's just got a nice little effect on the text. I mean, I'm not going to go into text effects in this tutorial because it's just boring and that could be done in a separate tutorial. So this is just basic text effect. This is nothing special. So you've got your name there, and yeah. So then you maybe want to add a slogan underneath it. So you'd want it like, the t oops, that's gone a bit weird. So you want it a bit smaller, so maybe size 40. And so you've got name, and then it's like slogan. Oh, that's not long enough, so. Um, your slogan here. And again, just hit the tick and control T, shift and get it like that. Now you'll notice that it doesn't go all the way across the size of the text. So if you go into your text properties here, your character properties, and the AV, you just want to increase it and until it's sort of spread out to the size of the text. So if we just move it down a bit and increase the AV around maybe 40. Yeah, that's perfect. Obviously, you wouldn't just have like name because that's really short, but whatever your name is, you could have that there. And you don't really need any text effects on that. I just like to maybe turn the opacity down a little bit. Um, it, it, does, it has a desired effect for me. Um, yeah, so that's usually the technique I use. So now, what we could do now is let's think. We've got the text, we've got the module effects, the background effects. Now we could uh, maybe add some finishing touches like flares. I'm a bit wary about using flares, but uh, you know, yes, used moderately, um, they can be effective in moderation. But if you use them a lot, it, it, they're really not good at all and it defeats the object. So if we just had a little flare here, no I don't like that one. Um, maybe this one. Yeah, we'll try this one. Um, just add your flare in and size it down a little bit, depending on the size of your flare. Mine are 1080p, so do that. And what you may, may want to do is flip uh, vertically, uh, depending on the flare you've got, obviously, because my flares obviously be different to yours. And put the blending mode on screen, and then just position it near your slogan like that, and that that gives it the desired effect. And get your, oops, get your eraser tool, which is oops, there. Do that, rasterize it first obviously, and put the size up. And just basically just rub away at the edge like this. And obviously you'll think, well, the flare's blue, the background's green. Just hit Ctrl U on your keyboard, bring this over here, and you can mess around with this until it's green like that. Maybe turn the saturation down, the lightness down. Because you don't want it to like same as the same as the uh, backdrop. You don't want it too overwhelming because obviously it's gonna it's gonna overtake your the rest of the background and you don't want to do that because this is just meant to be as a, a little backdrop. So I can just mess around with that. I'm not gonna mess around getting it perfect because we don't need that to be perfect. Just maybe put the fill down a little bit, maybe lower the opacity if you want. But it's just it's just to give it a side effect. It's not to uh it's not meant to be part of the main piece because, you know, 
they just, they just they look a bit tacky to be honest so now what we're going to do is we're going to get the pen tool and just let me check for time and we're going to maybe actually I've already done a tutorial on this but I'll just quickly yeah no, we won't do that because I've already done a tutorial on it uh, if you want to know about maybe making a signature flare go look at my channel there'll be probably a link on the screen somewhere um, somewhere on the screen right about now and that is signature flares that is a good tutorial to watch it um, I would really recommend using signature flares because it makes your work look a lot more professional and gives you branding options so you know it's it's just worth checking out so what we're going to do is we're going to end this sort of part here um, I've, this has just been the basic background I'm going to do another episode which is going to be um, an advanced background which is going to be better than this this is just for people who have just got Photoshop they're sort of wanting to make a background but they don't want anything too complicated but they want something to look really nice so if you watch this and enjoyed it then please give it a like if you've learned something give it a, give it a like as well Comment below um, what you think of the tutorial and also comment what tutorials you'd like to see. If you, uh, like I said, if you enjoyed, give it a like and if you're feeling extra generous, give it a favourite and that will make my day. So thanks for watching and please tune in for some more tutorials soon. Peace.